If you live in a high income country and your child has severe jaundice, you can take him or her to a hospital and she will receive blue light phototherapy. And the blue light just breaks down a neurotoxin bilirubin and babies pee it out and that prevents brain damage, so it cures them. Um, the thing to know about jaundice though is it's time sensitive, so you need to get children as quickly to hospitals. Um, if you live in a low income country though, and you go to a hospital that serves a general population, there may be no phototherapy devices, or you see phototherapy devices that look like this. On the left hand side, white bulbs, some of them are burned out. On the right hand, these are homemade, this is a homemade device. And a child can go in them and treat it and it's ineffective. I lead an organization called DREV. Uh, we develop products, we've been focused on medical devices that increase the income or improve the health of people living on less than $4 a day. So this is our quick, simplistic version of our design process. And the main thing to know is that we think about design as problem solving, but also the entire product life cycle. This is Brilliance. Um, this is a phototherapy we've designed. Um, you can see it here in a hospital in Tamil Nadu. And so far, it's in six countries, and it's treated over 16,000 babies. 90% of those babies would not have been effectively treated otherwise. So, but when you think about medical devices, um, and also our track record of four years, we've, ha we've learned a lot of lessons, and I was gonna share a few of those lessons with you. The first, if you're trying to reach emerging markets and have impact, the products need to be world-class. That means perform on par or better than the best products on the market. We look for regulatory approval, or third-party independent certification. The second lesson we've learned is that you need to be user-obsessed. In design, we talk a lot about user-centric design, which means really understanding the end users, iterating, really understanding their needs, keeping the users involved in the process. But by user-obsessed, what I really mean is understanding the entire context. Who's the purchasing decision maker? Who's the user? Does the mother-in-law have opinions about healthcare? In India and other places, yes. The third thing is that the product should be market driven. We're structured as a nonprofit, but we design our products so that once they hit the market, they are sold. They're not donated, they're not subsidized. But what this means is that the retail price must be highly affordable. And we believe that this holds us accountable as designers to our customers. The challenge though with medical devices, even with groups like us working, is that medical devices are still not serving the populations who most need them. This picture actually highlights some of the challenges we've seen um, with impact in the phototherapy sector. These children are healthy, they're severely jaundiced, and they're underweight. But I don't know if you know, some of the bulbs are burned out underneath them, and that's a challenge. This is the cost to replace the bulbs yearly in several countries. You can see it ranges from 2,000 in Uganda to 600 in Manila. You have a supply chain problem, but you have a fundamental cost around maintenance. And often people don't think about maintenance costs when they're looking at retail prices. The second challenge that we've run into with impact is reaching rural markets. And it be, this makes sense. If you think about it from um, a for-profit perspective, often it doesn't make economic sense to go into some of these more remote areas. You have to send service engineers, you have to send installation engineers. And in fact, the other night I was at um, a health dinner and a Nigerian minister said that rural, rural access is their biggest problem. The third issue is retail price. And affordability is really key to our model, which is what we're gonna talk about. The blue oval is where most phototherapy devices are. High quality, high cost, $3,500. That gray oval is those homemade devices. Low cost, but low performance. Brilliance is in that upper quadrant, $400. So th these are the components that make up the retail cost of brilliance. Um, you can see manufacturing of materials. And most organizations, when they think about innovating, particularly trying to reduce costs, they're really focused on technical innovation or lowering labor costs, which is the manufacturing and materials area. And so here you see a picture of brilliance. And one of the things that we did to bring down the cost, we, we used overall principles for design for extreme affordability. But we also, for example, did optical modeling. And we were able to minimize the number of LEDs and the lenses we use so that those, knowing that those are one of the most expensive components. I want us to think outside the box today. Um, can we innovate in distribution? Another idea we had is maybe we can shrink brilliance or we can design a phototherapy device that's very small. You can fit it in a box or maybe a DHL bag that's out there, ship it to the rural clinics. If there's a maintenance problem, maybe you swap it out by courier. Are there other areas that we can innovate? But the challenge is, is maybe we don't even need this model. Maybe we don't want to use that breakdown if we think about the sharing economy. So the question I want to 
discuss and I want you to brainstorm with me because we will take them back to DREV is can we reduce the, the retail costs while not compromising on quality and not relying on aid? And I hope, even if you don't have a health background, please join me because some of the best ideas we've gotten have been from all sectors.